Good morning. This is View from the Pew. It is Thursday morning, September 3rd, 2020. We're still looking at the commands of Christ, and today is a command that's hard in my mind to formulate, but I would define it in this way, and then I'll read the scripture to you. And that is this. Jesus commands, do whatever it takes to follow me. No matter how hard it is, do whatever it takes to follow me. It's a story, it is the story of the rich young ruler. So let me read to you. This is Matthew 19, 16 through 26. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God which is a clear statement there and in Mark 10 that in a real sense, in a spiritual sense, the only one who is good is God. There is none good, no, not one, none that seeks after God. We may do good things. We may on a temporal plane seem good to other men, but compared to a holy God, nobody is good. Jesus goes on to say, but if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And then the rich young ruler said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So what command can I draw out of that and you draw out of that that will apply to you and me? Well, it may not be that we have the possessions. We may not have great possessions, but are your possessions standing between you and Jesus? Are your material possessions, are the things of this world, whatever they may be, standing between you and Jesus? Let me ask you this question. If you were a follower of Jesus, if you were a follower of his teachings, if you sought to follow him and you came up to him and said, good master, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And let's say you did say, hey, I have tried to keep the commandments since my youth. Let's say even you can say that, to be honest. But to be honest, though, from this guy's standard, I'm pretty sure he wasn't able to keep the commandments. Let's just take thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, he's probably had some thoughts go through his head, even as an adult, that Jesus would claim would be adultery of the heart. So this may be an issue where this young man doesn't fully see his spiritual inadequacy before the Lord. He doesn't realize his lack of goodness, his lack of keeping the commandments. But Jesus doesn't address that. Jesus goes a step farther and says, okay, you want to be perfect? Here's what you do. Go sell all your possessions, give to the poor. And I don't know if you wanted to give it all or give some or what, but give to the poor and then follow me. And Jesus was basically saying, what's standing between you and me is your stuff. What's standing between you and me is your stuff. And so I ask you, if Jesus were to look at you and say, one thing you lack, what would it be? And let's just take it from the point of view of a believer, because even in believing and knowing that we have a home in heaven, we still got some room to go. We're not... We're not super Christian. We're not sinless perfection. We still have room to go. So when you look at this life, if Jesus were to look at you and say, 
one thing you lack, what would that one thing be? And it may hurt you to think to get rid of it, but here's the promise from God's word, which is good because his followers say, who can be saved if a rich man can't get into heaven? And Jesus said, with men it's impossible, with God it's possible. And that might even be an allusion to the fact that at the cross, God made it possible for anyone to go to heaven. Regardless of goodness or not, regardless of commandment keeping or not, through what Jesus did on the cross, he made a way that if men people, men would turn their life to Christ and women would turn their life to Christ, they could be saved. But let me just ask you, Christian, what is the one thing you lack in following Jesus fully? Deal with that thing. Deal with that thing so that you might follow Jesus as you should. Pray God gives you a great thirsty, and I pray that you'll follow him as close to perfection as you can today. God bless.